Okay, so thank you for coming. So my name is Nicolas Francois. I'm software engineering slash SRE. And today I'm going to talk to you about CATS retry. So the motivation for this talk is that I was used to create my own helpers and my own function in order to retry in a safe manner in Scala. And one day, just by scrolling through the type level uh, web page, I discovered CATS retry, which basically do, does everything I was already doing, but now I have a framework. And since uh, it's a really useful library, uh, I wanted to raise awareness about it, and so that's the motiv main motivation for this talk. Okay, so let's start with a dummy definition. What's retrying? So retrying is the ability for a system to re-execute an action when the previous execution was considered unsuccessful. And most of the time, and in most of the library you will find in any languages, this is driven around some uh, max time, so maximum time of execution, maximum time between retrying, and some number of retry. And so in the first, in the first part of this talk, I will show you the base, um, the basic block of cat's retry in order to express those those retrying policy, and then I will show you how to retry over your effect. So, um, uh, cat's retry def re uh, define policy with uh, some case class called retry policy, which have some function that take for some retry status will take some decision to, you know, wait and reschedule another execution. And most of the time, you never need to define those function yourself you have some base, uh, base, the basic case are handled by the library, so you have way to express constant delay or maximum number of retry, and you have um, a bit more complex one, like um, having some back-off um, back uh, policy, like Fibonacci or um, exponential one. And since we are programmer and functional programmer, we want a way to compose those basic policy to build more complex one. So to that, uh, CATS retry provide uh, two functions that I will present now. Uh, the first one is called join. And um, join work uh, this way. So if ever one of the <coughs> policy want to give up, the combined policy give up. And if both policy want to delay and retry, it's the longer of the two delay which is chosen. And this includes a really interesting property, which are that combining two identical uh, policy gives you the same policy. So basically, if you combine retrying free time with retrying free time, you get the retry free time policy. So, independent. Um, the order you combine policy doesn't affect uh, the resulted policy, so basically, if you have some complex system that um, you know remotely fetch the policy, you are guaranteed that uh, the order you receive policy doesn't affect the system. So basically, retry one minute with uh, join with uh, retry ten minutes is the same that retry ten minutes with retry one minute. And there is some identity policy that basically. Uh, retry with no delay and never give up. And this has actually a name in functional programming and it's called the uh, bounded semilatis. And what, why it's interesting is that uh, basically uh, cats uh, retry used all the stuff uh, defined in cats in order to have some principal uh, library that uh, rely on correct abstraction. So when you will use the framework, you don't really need to be, able, be aware about what uh, Windows Simulators is, but if you know what it is, it will just increase your productivity uh, because you don't need to uh, fetch the documentation to get the information I just gave. So there is actually a, du a dual of join, which is called meet. And basically, uh, if both policy want to give up, uh, the combined policy give up. If only one want to give up, so the, the global policy don't, will not give up. 
And if both policy want to delay and retire, it's the shorter of the two delay which is chosen. So just like joint meet is associative, commutative and important, so it's also bounded simulatis and you start to see the point. So um, there is another basic building blocks we need and this building blocks is to allow us to wait between two execution. And for that, you have some type class called sleep, which basically allow you to define a way to wait as you want. So this is really useful because it will allow you, to, you know, in, when you will express some tests or some integration tests, you will be able to give some uh, custom uh, sleep policy that basically will not really wait, but you will just uh, fast forward in time. And this is really useful. So now we have a way to sleep where you, we have a way to create some policy and to combine some policy together. So let's see more auto retry. So actually there is a um, fourth function that allows you to retry in uh, cat switcher. So the first one, which is basically the impure one since um, you know, we don't wrap uh, or, um, or action in some, um, some wrapper, but we, which is really useful, is that uh, you give the function retrying some policy, some was successful function. So basically, given the, uh, at the end of the computation, it will evaluate this function, and from this function, it will uh, deduce if the uh, execution was successful. You have something which is really, really useful, which is the on failure function. So in most of the time, you want, uh, when something bad happened, you want to log it or you want to maybe do some remote call to uh, give the information that something has failed. And for that, uh, you uh, simply provide some function that take uh, as argument the result of the computation and uh, uh, the retrial detail. Uh, I will not explain here what retry deta detail is, but basically it's the general con uh, co context of the retrying execution, uh, which go and the function goes to unit, so it's mandatory some side effect that you perform here. And then you give your action and you get, uh, get back some result. So of course, since we are uh, functional programmers, uh, we have some retrying M function, which does exactly the same, except here we uh, are parameterized with some M, which is the effect you want to use. So most of the time it's, uh, um, no, it's not most of the time. Uh, it's basically made for cat's effect IO, but it can work with Monix, it can work with fut Future, it can work with Zio, whatever. And uh, here, if uh, your uh, effect is, is pure, you, what this function does is it basically, it takes some base build blocks and wrap everything around in order to now produce some effects which uh, is able to retry. And everything is encapsulated and you just give this effect to some, somewhere else. Um, so you don't see the slip M uh, type class I mentioned earlier here. Uh, it's basically because they are implicit uh, in those uh, function. And globally, uh, the point is that uh, cat 3 try provide you this uh, slip type class for uh, Monix and uh, uh, cat's effect IO. Uh, there is also a working PR on Zio in order to also have the, the um, Zio monad abstraction. So, there is actually two other uh, retrying function. So um, those functions take part of the fact that we can define some monad error. So um, like in, uh, for example, in the future, which can be in two states, which is, you know, successful or failure. And so you know, Katsu try also handle this case. So this is not exactly, but almost the same um, 
definition, um, sorry, uh, definition that the previous one, except here, uh, the on uh, you are uh, defining if it's, it's worth retrying, and um, you have the on error uh, on failure function is based on the um, error you will get and not the result one, and it's basically the same the same API. So. Here is a simple example where we want to get some, uh, some cat GIF. So here we define some um, function of logging, which is basically a function that does nothing here. Uh, we define a policy which said we want to uh, limit uh, our stuff at uh, two retry, and we will basically not wait between execution. And then, as you may see, it's really simple. You just use retrying on all error on policy, uh, with policy, uh, the noob function, and the flaky request, and you will get back uh, some, um, some IO, which basically encapsulates and simplify all the retrying. So there is uh, some syntax sugar you can activate if you prefer you know, the uh, more uh, Scala notation with uh, uh, some call method with extension. And it allow you to do what is done here, to just do flaky request that retrying on all error. So actually, uh, when um, there is also a way, which is really practical actually, to define your uh, policy or um, on failure function as implicit, so they are uh, passed implicitly to, to the stuff. And so it's really useful when you are building a big module and you use the same policy everywhere to don't have to repeat yourself. Um, so one question we could ask is, can we compose stuff? And the answer is yes, of course, because we are working with some effects which are uh, composable. Uh, so here you have some example where you, we build some f uh, first uh, uh, effect which is retryable, we build a second one, and then we compose them together with flat map, and on the combined stuff, we also uh, retry. And that's just that simple. And uh, this is basically, I think, 70 or 80% of cat's retry. There is nothing more. This is just here to uh, take advantage of the fact that uh, we have a way to compose stuff, and it's just a principal framework that allow, allow you to work, um, to be more productive. So there is some question that you could ask, and this question is when to retry. And well, so when to use cat's retry. So if you are familiar with a framework like, uh, or library like Zio or Monix, uh, they already provide some abstraction in order to retry and see if all your code is uh, based on, and only on one of these uh, IO monads, you probably don't want to use cat retry because they are already building. Cat retry shines for cat's effect IO, which basically don't provide those abstraction, and also when you are working with some uh, tagless final techniques or when you have a difference um, IO monad in your code base and you want still to share retry policy uh, across framework, uh, in those cases, uh, cat's retry is really useful. Um, but on a more bird eye view, there is a question which is when should I retry in my code or not? And this seems like a simple question, but I think if I ask you and give you some example and I ask you if you want to handle the retrying yourself at this point in the code, I think answer will, div div uh, will be different. So um, to give this bird eye view, I will, I will call about service mesh. So just to know who knows what a service mesh is. Okay, almost nobody. Uh, so let me define it. So a service mesh is basically some infrastructure layer uh, which makes uh, service to service communication easy and um, reliable. 
And it's just a really, really high uh, level system that allow you to have some circuit breaker, some uh, service discovery, uh, and some retrying over the network. And the point of service mesh is to, the retrying in service mesh is to retry on error network. It's never about biz, you know, business logic. It's about the business of what a service mesh does, which is networking. And the same is true in code. In code, we are working at different level in our application. Sometimes we are working with business logic. So for example, we know we have some pooling to do because the information is not available yet. So we do some call and we expect some result. And for that, we will retry, we will do some pooling. But also, since we are uh, talking about um, through the network, there is a risk of networking which fail. But is it normal, um, is it your job to manage this error at this level in the code? Should it, should it be something which is handled differently at some other point of the code where you manage or you do connection to, through the network or even outside the application in the, inside the service mesh? And I think that's how I resonate, uh, I, I reason when I want to, to know if it's my job to retry. I'm looking at what I am doing, what is the business of what I'm doing, and is it the retrying linked to this business or not? And since we are working with effects here, and they are easily composable, and that you, you, know, you don't see that there is some retrying in the result of the function, it's easy to you know, pass the effects um, from layer to layer until it's executed at the end. And so everybody can add the effect they want at each step. So that's how you determine if you are in charge of retrying or not. So thank you for your attention. Uh, I will answer your question right after that. You can find the slide of this talk at this uh, URL.